Vodafone UK recently announced the launch of Edge services that leverage AWS wavelength compute and storage nodes. So what does this mean for the operator's edge computing strategy and the services that it can deliver to enterprise customers? Well, to find out more, I'm talking with Andrea Donner, Network and Development Director at Vodafone UK. So, uh, Andrea, what does 5G Edge mean to Vodafone UK in terms of mobile edge computing assets? And are those assets Vodafone's, a partner's, or a mix of both? Thanks, Ray. The assets are a mix of both Vodafone assets and partner assets. And the assets really uh, depend on what service you want to deliver, where you want to deliver, and how you want to deliver it. So if you've got the example of AWS Wavelength, which we launched last week, you want to put that, that computational power as close as possible to your strategic nodes in Vodafone, where you can have easy access to the network functions that the network provides you with. If, however, you want to provide um, services that are a lot closer uh, to the customer, you can use the case of NPN, a mobile private network, where the asset is a customer asset that is close to the customer and you provide the network functions to those assets close to the customer premise. And what kind of services can Vodafone realistically deliver and make money from using these assets? As we deliver an edge-based uh, architecture, an edge-based network architecture, all the um, services like low latency, ultra low latency, the high speed that 5G brings all become feasible. But I very provocatively uh, almost want us to free ourselves from what we can sell, but prepare ourselves for every eventuality. By exposing network functions, by creating a standardized interface to network function and making all the network functions available at the edge, you're prepared for any eventuality. So you're prepared for any services that the customers might avail from the network functions that you're exposing. So. I'm not one for chasing the killer application. I'm one for preparing the network for every eventuality and focusing on standardizing the network, rationalizing the network, clearly optimizing the network from a um, coverage perspective to ensure that the services you do expose, that you can interface uh, into with standard APIs are available and then once they're available, we let the ecosystem, we let the ecosystem of our partners, the developers, then really come and try those services. And from that, I'm sure we'll get great revenue streams and great applications rather than trying to second guess them. There will be, as I said earlier, probably latency based services, location based services and capacity and um, uh, speed type services that you want to expose on an edge-based platform. Okay, interesting. That's a very sort of cloud-oriented uh, approach to this. Um, now, you mentioned there earlier that there's there's different uh, ways to approach edge services. You've got these more uh, centralized uh, nodes, and then you've got the uh, edge assets that are closer to the customer. Uh, ultimately, how granular might the edge infrastructure become? I mean, could it evolve to include IT infrastructure even at street level? Will, will that ever be necessary? I think we'll tend to there eventually for sure. We will start with um, our edge-based uh, network functions being available in the sort of tens of assets, moving towards the hundreds of assets. Eventually we'll get to a thousand and beyond. For sure, that's a that's an evolutionary path that we will uh, definitely embark in. And that will also depend on uh, the sort of uh, latency requirements that you'd want. When you get to lower than the 10 milliseconds and you go to lower, lower than the five milliseconds, that granularity will definitely be required eventually. But we will start with the tens of assets having mobile edge computing and gradually moving to the hundreds and the thousands. And along that, Root, I think, I believe that we will eventually get to that granular level that you talk about, but it will take time. 
Okay, right. So we're at the beginning of the journey in many ways then. Um, now, in terms of the technology that you're deploying and using, are there any particular IT infrastructure capabilities that you need to support your 5G Edge ambitions? I mean, for example, do telcos need a new breed of servers? As we virtualize and as we containerize the network functions, the IT server element of that uh, virtualization obviously has to evolve and develop. And as more complex functions are virtualized, um, that IT capability, so to speak, needs to evolve with time. But I'd right, like to draw your attention, Ray, on the need to create an environment, a um, physical environmental uh, control um, a, a system in the in, in in the in the data centers to control these additional services, this additional computational power in terms of environmental controls, in terms of temperature controls, in terms of power consumption. So even though the IT needs to develop for those containerized network functions, there's a whole piece of the environmentals around it that need to develop as well. And that's something that we should not underestimate. Okay, yes, no, that's becoming a, a really important topic for, for all uh, operators. Um, now, ultimately, will edge computing platforms support all services and functions, including radio access network? I, th I think so. I think it will evolve there as well. We started seeing, seeing the start of a disaggregation of the functions with the a control user plane uh, separations as a standard of the mobile core. We see those sort of concepts developing also in the fixed core. And we see in cloud RAN and open RAN where you've got a division between uh, your baseband in the control units or the distributed unit and a mixture of the two. So invariably you'll get a, uh, a progression towards that disaggregation of uh, functions, including the RAN, uh, albeit maybe partly central and partly um, uh, distributed as the computational power, as the chipsets evolve to be able to take uh, control of that burdensome baseband uh, processing requirements that, that, uh, that the RAN requires. Yeah, lots of different moving parts there, uh, but lots of accelerated progression in the market, I think. Uh, Andrea, it's been great to talk to you again and get an update uh, from the Vodafone UK team. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you.